Good morning. Thank you for the for the present for the introduction. Um, Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. My name is Carlos Benavides. I am the Max Planck Institute in, in, in Dresden. Uh, the, the, the work I'm going to present was recently done with this uh, gentleman here, Jonathan Schmidt, which in Halle, which is more or less the expert in machine learning of this group, and Mateo Fadel, who is, is now at uh, ETH in Zurich, and he's the expert in uh, ultra-cold gases, dipolar gases, post secondary condensates. So let me introduce the, the problem I would like to, to, to tackle. It's very simple. In principle, I'm going to talk about ground states, but this can be extended to excited states, but I will focus in, in ground states and I will tell you why. So here there are some uh, particles. You can imagine that they are fermions, uh, even Cooper pairs, or bosons. In our case, it's bosons, but what I want to say is this can be valid for, for fermions. And here is an example of one of the fascinated properties of bosons is a condensate. Now, if you want to solve this ground state problem, so okay, we have, let's say these particles are in an external potential, some, some, some shape has external potential, but more important, these particles interact themselves. And this is crucial because the interacting part is what makes this problem very difficult. So let's say that we ask the ground state, the ground state could be a little bit boring because it's only one extent of all the available states, but we usually think, especially in electronic systems, that the ground state is a very good approximation for real states, even though you have temperature and you have like a bunch of excited states, usually the ground state for chemical systems, for material science, is a good approximation of the properties of the system. And here also for the case of bosons, even more dramatic because bosons usually can be achieved in very low temperatures. And now in bosons and fermions, electrons, etc., usually we have a Hamiltonian and we solve it by minimizing the expected value of the Hamiltonian in the Hilbert space, which is important for us, even some symmetries, etc. And now, all these Hamiltonians has two parts. One is this H blue, which is, let's say, the easy part, and the fundamental part in the sense that it contains external potential. And the external potential can be this trap, or can be a molecule, so the, 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 the ions that define a molecule, uh, ADN, etc. But this is what's particularly different from each system. What is common is W, which is the interacting term. You can think that electrons, independent if they are alone if they are in a, in a superconductor or they are in a molecule, they interact always by Coulomb interaction. And here, for instance, in a bose havard model, they interact by on-site interaction. And this interaction is somehow fixed, independent of any other characteristic of this small h. So again, this is usually one particle term. So without, with only this one particle term, it will be very easy to solve this problem. And this contains the, where the difficulties are, uh, arises. Of course, you can think the other way around, that is a very strange, uh, or, or only some cases can you use it. This approximation is that W is the easy part and H is the difficult part. But for us, the difficult part is the two-body interaction. And now one possibility is to solve this using wave functions. And you know that what appears here is the exponential scaling of the Hilbert space. So the Hilbert space or the dimension of the Hilbert space is scale, scales badly with the number of particles and the sites. Sites, the, for the word sites, I, 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 I mean the one particle Hilbert space or, depending on your field, the orbitals or the sites or the modes. So you have some modes, so the dimension of the one particle Hilbert space, the number of particles and this Hilbert space is case badly. So basically this minimization here is impossible to do in principle and uh, we need some approximations or some, technical, some techni techniques to avoid this scaling. Of course, our possibility for bosons and very successful is to use machine learning, both machines, etc. And for us, what I'm going to present is a different perspective of this problem. Somehow this perspective is inspiring density functional theory, but there are some uh, specialities of this approximation They are somehow new. So one way to avoid the wave function is to use reduced density matrices. The one body reduced density matrix, the two body reduced density matrix. In this case, I'm interested in the only one body density matrix. This is a simple object that doesn't scale with the number of particles. It scales only with the number of sites of the one particle Hilbert space. And for bosons, the only quality this matrix has is that it should be positive semi-definite. So it's very easy. Let's say this, this for fermions is a little bit complex, but for, 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 for bosons, it is the only condition you have. 
other way to say is that we don't have public principle. And now this quantity is quite important to describe both Einstein condensates. Why? Because if you make the spectral representation of this matrix, the occupation numbers here, these n numbers, can tell you if you are dealing with a Bose-Einstein condensate. Other way to say it is that there is an occupation number which is of the order of the number of particles or is macroscopically populated. So in that sense, this is what we need to describe Bose-Einstein condensates. And by the way, the bosonic density is not enough because you cannot know, uh, you cannot describe the, the occupation numbers with the density. And for this reason, density functional theory for bosons is not quite uh, a good approximation. And moreover, in practice, uh, the technical, how people uh, use density functional theory is Kongsham density functional theory, which looks for a non-interacting system that describes the interacting system. And for this case, a non-interacting system will give always a uh, Bose-Einstein condensation. So we focus in this one body density matrix, and also one body density matrix is important to describe many body entanglement. So there are a lot of information, basically, the most relevant information we need for describing the system is contained in this simple object that avoids to talk about wave functions. And there are a second reason. The second reason is that we can describe, a, let's say, new physical phenomena that I'm going to describe in the next uh, slides. So what means universal function? Universal function means I, this cartoon of density functional theory. Let's say that we ask what is the tallest person in this conference. So one possibility is to take the full list of persons with the height and then organize it and then minimize this problem. But another possibility is to, to know what is the tallest person in each room of the conference and then I have a set of this tallest person, let's say 10, and then the minimization problem is in principle easier. So this philosophy can be also used here. So I perform the minimization here. Again, I separate the Hamiltonian in two parts, the difficult and the easy part. And now I do the minimization the following way. I say, I minimize all wave functions given a one density matrix. So all the wave functions given the same density matrix. And on top of this, I perform the minimization in the set of density matrices. So this is quite interesting because the first, the first part here Okay, the first, the first part here, this, um, this H here, they, they go together with the one body density matrix. So let's say that this functional is linear in gamma. And the second is a universal functional that is as simple as the minimization of all wave functions or a wave function in a Hamiltonian given this one density matrix. And it's universal again because W is fixed. So if you have a Bose-Hubbard Bose model, well, the thing would change is the external potential. So let's say how interact with the different sites. But W is fixed, the on-site interaction is fixed. And this, is, this means that independent of H, there is only one functional. And this function is, this, is, the, is the topic of, of, my, of my presentation. So I will give you a very simple example, very simple, let's say, uh, somehow high school quantum mechanics, which is the bose hubbard dimer. It's very simple. bose hubbard dimer, I have two sides, left, right, and I have n bosons. I'm going to fix the number of bosons the, during the whole talk. I also can relax this condition, but the universal functional will be determined not only for W, the interacting part, the universal part, but also the number of particles. So here is the full a Hamiltonian, the first part is the hopping term, the second part is the external potential or disorder, depending on how you want to call it. And the second part, if you put W, U equal to one, U, uh, this term is universal for all these systems. And now, since here I have two terms, so two sides, sorry, gamma is two is a matrix, a very simple matrix, two times two. So gamma LL means the, basically the density in the left side below n minus gamma L, L is basically the density in the right side. And in the, in the diagonals, I suppose, I assume that here I am dealing with real one density matrices. So basically they are equal, and this is the hopping term gamma L, R. And with this, I can describe the whole system, independent of the number of particles. So I fix the number of particles, but the number of particles can be one million. And at least I have this de density matrix. So by the, the condition that it's positive semi-definite, one can prove that they live in the disk. So I have a geometry for the, all these density matrices. Here is gamma LR here and gamma LL here. I normalize for convenience to one everything to, to avoid, uh, to, to make uh, compar comparisons. But the point is that every gamma should live inside this disk, in some part of the inner of, of the disk, and the Bose-Einstein condensates are in the border. 
So here I have different description of all the physics, but based on the one density matrix or the geometry of the one density matrices. So the Bose Einstein condensates are in the border. And the middle here is basically co corresponds uh, to half-half, um, so half the particles on the left side, half the particles on the right side. So we can think that this is a mod state of the problem. So now what I have here is inside this disk, I can also separate the density matrix into parts, the orange and the black region. Black region means density matrices which cannot come from ground states. So there is no external potential such that the ground state corresponds to this density matrix. And the orange region are ground states. So all possible ground states are in the orange region. And now, I have, okay, again, here, and the back states are in the border, and the universal functional, this is an exact calculation, is basically this convex functional. So or this graph in 3D, so there is for each point, so for each density matrix, there is a, a point in the functional that describes for that density matrix the value of the interacting energy. So the most difficult part of this problem is the interacting energy, and again, the value of this functional is corresponding to this graph. There is just a difference uh, between the functional I'm going to present. One is there are pure functional or ensemble functionals. Pure are coming for the minimization in the set of pure wave functions or coming for ensemble systems. Here is for ensemble systems. Again, the bose einstein condenser are in the border. And here, there is a new concept that we, let's say, we found uh, by doing this work, is the gradient of the functional diverging the border of the bose einstein condensates meaning that these states can never, uh, can never be achieved in reality. Okay, no surprising. We know that interacting systems cannot, uh, can never be 100% of condensation point, but here there is a, a geometrical description of these facts of, of quantum depletion, and you can compute it. Here, more examples. Here is for n equal to four, so four, four particles, six particles, an infinite number of particles, and here are exact functionals for all these systems. Here, the functional is always convex, in the ground state region, and is concave in the non-ground state region, which also implies some things for, for the ground state system. But again, to conclude here, you can describe ground states, uh, bosonic ground state, with using only the one density matrix. This is the same spirit of density functional theory that you use the density, and also you avoid the scaling of the Hilbert space. But of course here I was explaining only just two part two, two sides, very simple. You don't need this, all this theory to describe these systems. So what about if you want to tackle larger systems? And for them, we relied in machine learning. This is the work we did uh, six months ago with this, um, with Mateo and, and Jonathan. So the point is this. So the idea is that again, if you just remember the description of the one density matrix, it's just this sandwich of the creation and relation operators. And the crucial point is that imagine that in reality we don't have a wave function, but m by m, the number of sides, m with n minus one wave functions. And the interesting part is that this m with n minus one m function, uh, n minus one particles wave functions, the angles of these wave functions corresponds to the entries of the one density matrix. And then each one, each one of these can be described in the Hilbert space of n minus one particles. Okay, this is cool, and now, of course, the C terms here, the C terms here, they describe a matrix, so the matrix with the superposition of all these states. So now I can do a, what is called a trivialization, trivialization map in quantum learning, is that this C can be, I use the singular value decomposition of this C, U sigma B, so two or, or, uh, orthogonal matrices, so U corresponds to what diagonalized gamma, sigma corresponds basically to the square root of the occupation numbers. And then if I put all this in the functional, I have now a minimization, not in the Hilbert space, but a minimization in the set of orthogonal matrices. And now this minimization corresponds to a rotation in the Hilbert space, like I, this cartoon here. And then I can basically lift this dependency in the orthogonal, in the space of orthogonal matrices to the Lie algebra. And this conform, uh, perform a trivialization, so I have only to do uh, on the terms in the Lie algebra, so in the, in the, in the, in the Cartesian, in the Cartesian uh, space. So just this wise, that is this F corresponds to R, so the, the Cartesian plane, to the uh, Lie algebra. And now this minimization allows to use basically all machine learning because the only thing I have to learn is the corresponding B, matrix B, and then using 
automatic differentiation, a basic Lewis pi torch, we can develop a, a one of the first maybe implementation for density functional theory or for the reduced density matrix functional theory in machine learning, a fully convolutional neural network. And here, this implementation is only for translational invariant systems, so no external potential. And what we learned is this quantity here, which is the expected value of bj, bj plus one, which is the important quantity in translational invariant systems. And here is just a comparison of the derivative using the automatic differentiation for the Daimler. Okay, the error is basically zero here, so there is no, no important uh, learn, uh, finding here. But as soon as you increase the number of sites and the number of particles, the system can, is really a, an approximation. And one example I have here, or the example we have in the paper, is the bose Hammer hamiltonian with 40 and 40 sites. The dimension of the Hilbert space is 10 to the 22, so basically the constraint finding the definition of the, of the functional is impossible to do it in practice. So we learn this functional and we obtain basically exact results. Okay, this is the functional here. And we obtain basically exact results for, for strongly and weak correlation regime. An intermediate regime is where we have usually problems. Uh, for, for, for machine learning wave function, the error here is basically 0.1%. But for we, we, we never attempt here to have um, energy is better than wave function methods, but a very good approximation because it supposes that this is much, cheap, much cheaper than um, wave function methods. So here in the intermediate regime, we obtain 3%. In the context of density functional theory, this is a very small error, and the context of wave function force is a large error. But it depends on the compromise between computational cost and uh, good numbers in approximation. And again, so the take home messages is that one can describe both Einstein condensates, you can describe both bosonic interacting system, we can all describe all these systems with a one body density matrix for, for, the, for the ground state. What you obtain is a functional, and then you have to learn this functional. And the way to avoid this, the, the minimization of the set of wave functions is to, to, to realize that we can describe this system like M wave functions with n minus one particles, and then using machine learning, we can achieve very good approximations both for the functional and for the energy. So what we are doing right now is to increase or to, to elevate this approach to the polar systems or to mix of both Einstein condensates that I think is quite promising and, and also this description is valid for superconductors, and this is the other thing we are trying to do. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for the very nice presentation. So are there any questions? Yes, it's a good question. So I didn't describe this. It's a, it's a little bit uh, technical. So there is a, math, uh, a proof of the theorem is that, okay, the technicality is this. This rotation here is performed in the space of the M wave functions coming for the exact ground state. So somehow the, we, we reduce, we don't have to go to the whole Hilbert space only to a uh, subspace in the n minus one particles with m dimension. This is, this is the, the proof. But the difficulty is that we still have to learn which is the space. It's a more flexible than learning the ground set, but it still is a, is, is a problem. So here, we trivialize this as soon as we know that, fo that space. So the point is that that space is trivial here because it's a mod insulator, and that space is trivial here. So basically, what we learn some, some points here, we approximate some points in the middle of this subspace, and then we learn B, the matrix B. So basically, the, 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 the thing to make this exact is to find or to implement maybe a machine learning method also to learn what is the, this subspace in the, in the Hilbert space. But I think it's quite promising that this, this is an approach to really learn it, and the most important thing is that soon, as soon as you have this approximation, the minimization here is really trivial in the sense that it's unconstrained. Okay, so there's one Thanks last. Thanks, Carlos, for the nice talk. Uh, so I was wondering if you can generalize this approach
approach for a hardcore um, boson system, like spin systems, and then study like uh, models that you cannot study easily with uh, quantum Monte Carlo, like uh, exactly, like fr exactly. system of frustration and uh exactly. So, so the answer is, is yes. So, of course, I am presenting this result, and it could be okay numerically be are not impressive because mo quantum Monte Carlo already exists, and somehow okay, why you want to develop a method for for bosons if quantum Monte Carlo is exact, basically unlike Fermi's. But the idea is that as soon as you have the functional, you can describe, for instance, mixtures of bosons, or you can describe uh, polarons. Or you can really, so some system in which you don't want to do the whole quantum Monte Carlo simulation, but you have really good functional to approximate it. And basically what I mentioned here of what, how to learn it is also valid for fermions and for, for superconductors. So basically in all these systems, this, this, this should work. I mean, there will be some difference, but this should work. So from your calculation, can you give uh, some information about like uh, at what uh, critical temperature or some other critical parameters that uh, the quantum phase transition happens? Okay, this is a good question. So here there is no temperature, so here is is just the really the ground state. But uh, in the last year, in the last two years, this is also can be generalized to to, to temperature. And then what appears here is that the functional depends not only on the number of particles and the universal part, but also on the temperature. And I think this is quite promising because basically, okay, I can tell you why. I can tell you what, what happened there. So the, the, the how we are extending this to temperature is to purify in the duplication of the Hilbert space, a technique for, for black hole entropy, that you duplicate the Hilbert space, and then you can do exactly the same thing, but in the duplicate space. And then you have pure states. So basically, this is another way to, 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 to go uh, beyond this, this framework. But here, for instance, w one of the, uh, it's not really a critical parameter, but somehow the, the parameter, the important parameter here, since this translational invariant is this eta, which is basically respected value of creation in one side, annihilation in the other, so the hopping term. Okay, so let's thank the speaker one more time. Thank you.